Hi, welcome to the Crochet Authority podcast, the best and maybe smallest corner of the internet where three incredibly talented and beautiful women claim to know everything there is to know about fiber arts. We are Morgan, Anna, and Savannah, three crocheters turned BFFs who consistently have too much to say. Consider this a glimpse into not only our conversations, but our overflowing and powerful minds. From our group chat to your ears, welcome to the pod. Hey! Hey, everybody! (laughs) Welcome What's back. <laughs> What's up, girls? <sighs> <You know. laughs> the energy in this room is like the usual. <laughs> it's infectious. It's so mm-hmm. good. Um, not much is up with me. I haven't done much of anything, anything. besides work the past no. week. So it really is work and come home and... So you can go back to work again. <laughs> I love it. Love that. I love it. Great vibes. Mm-hmm. It's very Probably gray here. here. Please. Mm. Love. We've got the sun out here, but it is 30 degrees outside, which I don't enjoy. Mm. Mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. Not 30 in Celsius, 30 in Fahrenheit. Like, weren't you so. wearing, like, what, yeah, thank you, I figured as much. Um, <laughs> weren't you wearing shorts, like, all winter? Yeah. And Spring break was, like, 60 degrees, so, like, a week ago it was fine, but... Love. Yeah, it was really warm here a week ago. Mm. It's quite cold now. Yeah. Boo. It was snowing in Toronto yesterday. Like snowing? Crazy, yeah. We haven't had snow here in quite a while. Same. So maybe soon. Uh, We didn't get a lot of snow this winter. Well, I'm so glad that the vibes are mediocre for all today. Really great start, positive energy. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how yeah. we like to. At least we're on a level. Same page. Field. We're all on the same page. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I also okay. haven't worked much on anything. School has been ramping up once almost again. Done. Only almost yeah. done. Six weeks left, and I have like three or four big old papers to write. Ah! Always. Mm. Always. But I've. I'm. I'm determined alongside these papers to finish this blanket before the end of the semester i, mean, I think you can when's, I'm not your, sure. when's the end of your semester <clears throat> the first week of may oh okay um right i think you can like i can if you can't. commit to like a certain number of rows a week or like if you try to do a couple a day I, like, calculate I think that, you can uh, i think you can and I like make it more manageable those, yeah like five rows a night or something I don't yeah. think five rows tonight would even do it. I think it'd need to be much more than that. Well, pr- yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. If you don't, if well, you don't stretch yourself thin, uh, are yeah. you even trying? Exactly. If you don't burn yourself exactly. out in the process, does it what's even matter? What's the point? Yeah, what's the point? If I don't hate it by the oh. end of the project, did I even do the project? No. <laughs> did you even crochet it? I don't think exactly. so. Exactly. Exactly. If you don't partially okay. injure yourself. Did you even make a blanket? So true. That's, How would I... that's so true. Guys. I was talking to someone yesterday about ourselves. crochet. <laughs> and uh, I was talking about how I like their earrings um, and how my ears aren't pierced. And they were like, yeah, just take a crochet needle and like put it through your ear next time. And I was like, yeah, crochet needle. needle. Mm-hmm. I will do that. I will. Thanks, so guys. Close. Ooh, you have, so I don't close. know you didn't have your ears pierced. This is true. I mean, you can't really see Not really. the fact that, yeah. <laughs> but they aren't pierced. Never Why? really got them pierced. You should have never wanted to. Um, yeah. Well, my sister got hers pierced, but my mom was like, you need to wait until you're like 11 or 12. I used to want it so bad, but by then I was like, I don't want to keep it in for like, I don't know, you have to keep it in for like a month or two months straight or mm-hmm. something. And I was like, yeah. I don't care that much. So You have to take care of it whenever you, no, I was honestly similar. I got my ears pierced just because I was like, well, like. I'm a girl and girls always get their ears pierced so like I Mm -hmm. got them pierced and it was like fun to a certain extent but I never remember to like I would just wear the same earrings all the time I always wear like the same hoops um but now now that I care a little bit more about jewelry I'm more interested in um like getting more piercings but yeah no I'm I'm also like just kind of don't care I have them done but like for a while I was like whatever (laughs) yeah I have I got my ears pierced I think I was like four or five when I got my first piercings. Yeah. I was in kindergarten. I don't remember, but like, I remember going to the mall. I got them pierced at the mall. I was so scared, (laughs) but I really wanted them. And so I got them pierced. And then I got my second here and my second and third Mm. in 
grade 10 or something mm. all on the same day. Also at the mall. Not a good idea. <laughs> and then I got my third and then my fourth here last year. Love. I love that. That's so I many. really, That's I now want to get at least my second lobe piercings. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, just cause those, I think you only have to keep in for like three months opposed to cartilage, which yeah. is mm. six. I'm just nervous about getting both done and like, I'm a side sleeper. So am I. Mm. So like, it like kind of worries <laughs> me to like get it's it done easy. and, and yeah. But so the, if that's it's, your second lobes are not, but... it's not hard. Yeah. I feel like they that one be pretty quickly but and it doesn't hurt. The cartilage, as much as I love the look of it, the, um, practicality of letting it heal. Mm. I'm too that, scared that's a to little. do that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I did my nose piercing, so. That's true. Mm. It's not impossible, but your nose is not the same. Like, it does, didn't <laughs> you don't impact sleep sleeping. On your face. <laughs> sleep on my face. <laughs> not breathing. No, like my yeah. fourth year, I think, was like technically a lower helix. So it was a bit of cartilage and it fucking hurt. Mm. Yeah. So it's not you, easy to you heal. Might, you may have said it and I like already forgot because, you know, do you want to get your ears pierced or do you just not care at all? I, I'm not opposed to it. I'm not morally opposed, not religiously opposed, <laughs> not anything. But oh. um, I just don't have any particular desire. Yeah. yeah. That's fine. I've been, I'm also like, I feel like I need to up my jewelry game as well. So maybe, maybe it's in the books for me because that's a pretty easy avenue. Yeah. It also increases, like, the amount of gifts that people can give you. You know what I mean? Like, a lot of people... Like, my mom's always like, you need to get your ears pierced. Like, I I always want to get earrings free for Christmas. So. That's what it is. And it's all about, like, what other people can give you for free. Exactly. Exactly. Shape your body for what other people can do for you. I've literally said that all the time. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Okay. Well, I was just thinking, you saying that, I'm like, we should start a list of all the things we have to do together okay once we finally meet the three of us in person i'm not getting any more piercings Uh, you're not part of this it's not about you (laughs) get savannah's ears pierced i'm up for it (laughs) yeah morgan this literally isn't about you okay i thought you were gonna say we should all get piercings together no okay it's about why are you acting like that's such an out-of-pocket thing to say (laughs) Because you wouldn't let me finish my sentence. Ooh. <laughs> Marital troubles. Marital okay, troubles. well, we'll just peer pressure Savannah into getting her ears pierced. I don't think it'll take yeah. a lot of pressure. We take you to Claire's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The least so. sanitary, most awful Disgusting. place. Disgusting. That's where I Are went. Still, and I still lived. Exist? Are they still open? Yeah. yeah. They now do nose piercings. No. That's vile. Yeah. Isn't that awful? That should be illegal. The Is it like 12 year olds of- or something? <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea. Like, getting my nose pierced, if I had at a Claire's with a a, a piercing gun, yeah. no. No, 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 mm. no, 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 no. Absolutely you. not. Ouchie. Like, ouchie, ouchie. it's on, on your face. Anyways, we're not getting into it. Anyways, but yes. I was like, what if we come up with a list of all the things that we need to do together? Number one on the list, mm. get Savannah's ears pierced. Okay. Yes. Okay. We won't meet for another Perfect. decade, so yes. Savannah, yeah. just make sure your ears yeah. stay on. One of us is going to have to get married first. <laughs> <laughs> Dead ass. You guys are going to meet me for the first time in person yeah, at, my at your wedding. Yes. Yeah. Sounds good. <laughs> You're like Perfect. in the bridal party. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's everybody working oh. on right now? The blanket. Oh yeah. You know, anything, anything else? Or just that? Oh. Oh, yeah. It's just that. Just that. Essays. Oh, okay. Kind of like um, essays. We have that, too. I just... am planning on making the heart pants pattern sometime. Love that. Um, Love that. So I'm making a bunch of squares for that. I don't know how many I have. I have, like, a stack of them. Um, I work on them on the drive for spring break. Um, but I'm just so depressed at the thought of having to probably make, like, 20 or 30 more in addition to this cat blanket that I'm just not going to think about it. Don't bother. That's definitely yeah. a summer project. That's the, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's Crochet a, I've graduated sure. mm-hmm. and I'm going to sit at home and make these. Exactly. Instead of... Exactly. Yeah. You got it. Yeah. You got it. Yeah. You got Perfect. It. What about you, Anna? Um, I'm still working on my sweater number 15 by my oh, yeah. things knitwear, but I haven't really touched it 
I think really since the last time we talked about it, I haven't mm. worked on it just because I was saying to Morgan, like literally all I have to do is pick up the stitches for like the front front left mm. of the sweater. Mm-hmm. And I've just been putting it off. I don't know. There's something about picking up stitches that just really... I hate it. It takes hate two it seconds. Stitch. It really is like it not does. hard. I just have been putting it off. Um, and then I just got some new drops yarn. I got drops mm-hmm. bell. It's like the cotton linen blend. Mm-hmm. Um, because I want to knit a dress like a summertime dress. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I just cast it on last night, but I'm using four millimeter mm-hmm. needles. Ooh. So it took forever to cast on. Just cast on. Yeah. In the because round. there were so many in the round. I was sitting there being like, making sure all my stitches were flat. So it wouldn't yeah. like end up being curved and whatever. Oh, I, I think it's fine actually, but. Um, I started that just last night, so I don't have a lot done, but those are the only two things that I'm actively working on, but I have, um, honestly a bunch of crochet ideas. I just ordered some yarn because I didn't have anything in my collection that would work, so I haven't started them yet, but they're in the works. Big things are coming. Guys. Big things coming, guys. Stay tuned. Yeah. (laughs) Stay tuned. Um, I'm working on the levitate wrap. Wow. Can you tell? That looks so good. I love that color. My love. Yeah, so I say that every time, but wow. There she is. She's gorgeous. The shoulders that love, Anna love, is love. refusing to pick up on her, yeah. her sweater. But yeah, I know. this is what I'm working on. I started this Lovely. last week. Of course. You, you work did. so fast. What of size needles are those? Six. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. So they are a little bit bigger, but, but still. It's like so no, that you're working fast. So yeah, it's just easy. Like, I love a project like that. So mm-hmm. I, I'm also not sure I have enough yarn for it, which is really Oop. fun. Yeah. Well, we'll find out. Cropped sleeves all the rain. <laughs> Just Maybe I'll taper elbows. the sleeves a bit. Mm-hmm. I wonder if they're shaped. I don't know. There might be. I don't know if they're shaping on this. I'll have to look. But we'll see. So well, yeah, that's what I'm working on. Love it. Amongst other things. But yeah. Cute. That's it. That's great. So today, <laughs> today we're talking about social media. Because what else would we talk about? <laughs> <laughs> something new, something, something new and innovative. But I do like this topic. Yeah. So we are talking about the accessibility of social media in many aspects of the word. We're talking about how easy it is to become easy, quote unquote easy it is to become famous or an influencer Mm -hmm. on social media but also how accessible said influencers and famous people are on social media Mm -hmm. to everybody else and what happens then and everything that is going on just to keep it simple (laughs) just to keep it simple so social media is obviously very accessible look at us us (laughs) joe schmoes have gained quite quite the following and audience Mm-hmm. On Instagram, yes. on TikTok, on YouTube. We're regular people. Yes. Ten years ago, this would have been a lot harder. Yeah, we would not know each other at all. We wouldn't know each other. We wouldn't have been able to amass the following that we have. I probably wouldn't have learned how to crochet off of YouTube. Well, two, ten years YouTube. ago off of YouTube, yeah. perhaps. But like, 20. <laughs> yeah, but it just doesn't, it doesn't take much, aside from us, it doesn't take much to become internet famous. Mm -hmm. post a video video gets a million views boom Mm -hmm. you're viral lots of people know who you are Mm -hmm. that didn't used to happen Mm -hmm. you couldn't just be famous for anything back in the day yeah the regular people that were famous were like not even regular people it was like Mm -hmm. socialites yeah or Mm -hmm. like models if you Mm -hmm. weren't an actor or anything and that was about it like it was like paris hilton kim Mm -hmm. kardashian but now it's like Charlie D'Amelio, mm-hmm. et cetera, et cetera. Victoria Paris. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which are still, I feel like like those examples, especially they still came from very rich families. Yeah. So they like have the leisure time to make social media content in a way that most regular people do not, but they are still like, I don't know. No one knew who they were no. before. They weren't socialites. They didn't have like a famous last name or anything. No, they weren't. They didn't star in a movie. Yeah. Because they knew the right people. Mm-hmm. They're not, you know, they don't have music careers. Yeah. Well, I guess, does Charlie do, so- do music now? <laughs> I think so. I think yeah. she did like a song or two. <laughs> you know, to throw her hat in the ring. Anyways. Let it, well, that's what it is. I think 
what I was just thinking about is when, like, YouTube first became a thing and some of those, like, original YouTubers, like, mm -hmm. you know, the, what is it, like, the Brit Squad or whatever. Yeah. Like, mm. you know, there there was definitely um, this movement's the wrong word, but all of a sudden, mm. like, influx of people who got on YouTube at the right time as it was getting mm -hmm. big and, you know, they provided something to us. They were oftentimes just very normal people who... Yeah took off because they provided entertainment in a different, more relatable way than we could watch on television. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But they had to, first of all, they had the advantage of it being new. So, you know, there wasn't that same type of like learning social media that people have to do now. Yeah. But they also, in my opinion, had something to give. They really were providing entertainment and not saying that influencers now don't, provide entertainment but a lot of yeah. the time like i'm thinking of victoria paris like peace and love what does she do besides <laughs> like we like watching her be rich and yeah. that's not like shade like i watch her videos too but yeah. like like genuinely what else does she do maybe i yeah i am unaware but you know even like once regular people started getting platforms on social media and places like youtube you know i think that they had to actually give us something tangible opposed mm -hmm. to now where it's like, you really like, if you're pretty enough and you're lip syncing, <laughs> you're you good. could get millions yeah. of views, millions of likes, and it could catapult you. Like, I think of that one girl who like had that very distinct smile. Yeah. What was it in like 2020 or 2021? Yeah, I know you're like the about. promiscuous girl um, audio. Yeah. Savannah, I think you would know her Savannah if like, is puzzled. we sent yeah. you the video. Maybe. Cause she was huge. Yeah. And she blew up cause she had a very distinct smile yeah. and it's like <laughs> and good for it. her, but like she blew up cause she was pretty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. At least from my understanding. So even from the beginnings of social media to now, the way to become famous is in some ways harder cause everyone's trying to get famous. It feels like, but also yeah. at the same time, so it's like, easier. it's so much easier. Also like, cause we're all there to what you were mm -hmm. saying about the earlier days of YouTube. Like, you had to have a camera as well. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. you had to have yeah. a proper camera and you, it took a lot more to build a following on YouTube because mm -hmm. on YouTube, you have to choose the videos that you watch nine times yeah. out of 10. Sometimes you can just click yeah. a playlist or you have autoplay on whatever, sure, but yeah. especially back then, like you were subscribed to people mm -hmm. and you watched who you were subscribed to. Yeah. And then you saw their friends, maybe you subscribed to their friends, the occasional, you know, video recommended on the side, but you were still intentionally watching every video that you were watching. Mm -hmm. You have to click on it and watch it. On TikTok, there are no intentions. You open the app immediately, you are, you are watching a video, whether you wanted to or not. Mm -hmm. You scroll, immediately the next video is playing. You're not choosing anything. So it's like, mm -hmm. you, it's easier because you're just you post something on tiktok you don't have to do like so much work you just mm -hmm. you still have to do work to like make it entertaining and keep an audience but like you don't have to entice people to click on your video yeah you know what i mean it's literally fed to them yeah. so yeah so anyone can really become an influencer because all mm -hmm. everyone's got a phone all you need is a phone pretty mm -hmm. much everybody has a phone a way to make videos access to youtube you don't need a fancy camera you don't need a microphone. You don't even need, like, a good idea. No. Like, you don't. <laughs> you just it's follow like, the trends. Mm -hmm. Like, you you really do. And that can that can go for us as well. It's like some of yeah. my <laughs> most successful content has been, like, posting a video following someone else's pattern. Yeah. yeah. I'm just true. recording the thing that I'm making. I didn't do much besides set up my phone or my camera. Mm -hmm. And people decided to watch for whatever reason. Like... It's not like I sat there and designed the pattern. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But as much as we now have access to become famous, everyone has like access to each other. Again, back in the day, mm -hmm. you know, like, like Kim Kardashian, like Paris Hilton, any actor, singer, whatever, you didn't really have a direct line to them. But now with social media, you do. They're posting on Instagram. You can comment on their Instagrams, especially on TikTok when it's them talking to the camera more than just like a picture mm -hmm. on Instagram. It's like, it's a much more direct relationship, I guess you could say. 
Mm -hmm. because it's like you don't like write them a letter like people used to write letters Mm -hmm. and it's like maybe it'll get to them maybe Mm -hmm. they'll read it maybe they'll Mm -hmm. respond like your the stuff that you type onto your phone is going directly into their phone Mm -hmm. there is so much less of a barrier and parasocial relationships are crazy now it's so interesting to me how fans can now like shape try to shape the public image of the people they like as well like obviously with kate middleton right now they would not be putting out all these statements and everything if there wasn't like wild social media pressure to do so um same with like i I took a fan studies class many years ago and i still think about it um but how fans get like angry when the celebrity they like or the musician or whatever that they like um isn't in line with what they've like created them to be like in their parasocial relationship or or whatever i i specifically think about um like taylor swift and like the gayler part of the fandom um that insists that she is not heterosexual at all she's not even bi she is fully um gay and loves carly Kloss. always has always will um and they just get so angry at any expression of um attraction to anyone that's not a woman for her like it's what what do you mean what do you mean you don't get to say this you don't get to tweet at her because like uh when you get to that certain like like that level of celebrity um or a certain level of influencer i feel like past like five million followers you're not gonna see everything um but if if there's enough people saying it you're gonna see something eventually and i'm sure same goes for taylor swift i'm sure like her pr agency or whatever has like is like monitoring what people are saying about her yeah (laughs) um but yeah it's so interesting to me how people think they can like uh kind of once people get a certain following uh they can like not ask or almost insist they can comment on how they want the person's persona to be shaped i i got a comment the other day um that i didn't like shave my legs for a video um no one else even noticed it's barely visible um but that's also part of it like they think they can if they make this comment oh maybe i'll like shave my legs for the next video like so sorry you had to see hair on a woman's legs god forbid that's the other thing is because like with us with traditional celebrities Mm -hmm. because of social media we're sharing a lot more Mm -hmm. and now people think they know a lot more about everybody's life yes and then oh i know i know savannah Mm-hmm. I know Savannah personally because I see her videos mm-hmm. and I follow her. So I can uh-huh. comment whatever I want. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I follow her. I'm like keeping up her presence. Like we give you money, you know? I saw this. Um, it's like a, there's like a tweet going around. Like what's the funniest Twitter interaction? Um, and it's from whenever Ariana Grande used to be super active on Twitter. Um, and someone was like, I don't know what the comment was. They were just telling her to do something. Um, she was like, I can literally do whatever I want. Like hop off my back. Like you are a fan. Um, they were like, who pays your bills? Huh? And it's like, that's so, you (laughs) know, you're not entitled to that at all. Like, okay, just stop listening to her music. If you aren't happy with what she's doing. It's also, I, I think a lot of people, forget to pause and they they're like well I can leave a comment and Mm -hmm. I'm allowed to leave a comment but it's like how often do people stop and think like just because I can doesn't mean I should Mm -hmm. you know it's like you like I see that all the time like you guys were just saying like yeah you can leave a comment about this stuff but should you is it Mm -hmm. actually helpful like you can have an opinion without sharing it which is something we have said before groundbreaking (laughs) i know but you can have an opinion without sharing it because sometimes like or or you can leave it in a space that isn't directing directly at a person you know you can go on a reddit thread and have these conversations with other people within within a fandom or whatever you're allowed to have critique that's not a bad thing but to say it to someone directly no matter how not famous to famous they are, doesn't matter. Like, it's just, it's, it's weird. Like, do you not stop mm-hmm. and think like, yeah, like you can leave that comment, mm-hmm. but should you? But would you yeah, say like, it to their face? Would you say yeah. it to their face? Would you want someone saying it to you? Like I, stuff like that has happened to me before. And I've talked to you guys about it. Like 
I don't consider myself to be famous in any capacity, but yeah. there are people who follow me and my content and I post a little bit about my life and stuff. Just because I choose to say stuff about my life sometimes doesn't mean I want people commenting about it. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. Yeah. you don't know me. And I don't mean that to be rude. Mm-hmm. Obviously, I like to form relationships with people. Mm-hmm. Other people, other influencers, other celebrities like to form relationships with their fans. Mm-hmm. But it's like Taylor Swift is on a stage saying that she loves you. It's like, mm-hmm. I don't doubt that she does. But also at the same <laughs> time, it's like, that doesn't mean that you know her and are entitled to saying things or making assumptions or whatever. I think mm-hmm. people oftentimes get comfortable and don't don't critically think about how their words actually impact people. Yeah. And kind of along those lines, I don't know if anything I'm saying makes sense. I have like such foggy, groggy morning brain. <laughs> but um, I watch Twitch streams sometimes of, you mm-hmm. know, just people I enjoy consuming their content and obviously they're joking around like they have like their own distinct style of joking and stuff and Mm -hmm. like some of the like people in the chat like will join in or whatever and then other people don't like they take the jokes too far or whatever Mm -hmm. and I'm just like in those moments I'm like do you not stop like at at what point is it too far for you to try to get someone's attention yeah yeah like you're not joking you're making them uncomfortable they're a human being yeah you know it's like you've pushed the joke too far. And I don't think a lot of people stop and really critically think about how their words actually impact people because they're going to end up hurting the people that they supposedly love Yeah. in the process. That's, you know what I mean? I don't, like I said, I don't know if any of that just made sense. No, it makes sense. It's also like, as much as like, we think we know people that we see on social media, people for like leave comments and then that's it. They're gone. Like you can comment something mm-hmm. nasty, close the mm-hmm. app. You don't have to face it again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like it's done. You type. You type on your phone. Mm-hmm. Enter. Done. Mm-hmm. People mm-hmm. are like, like have become desensitized to the fact that you're still saying those things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just because it's on TikTok, just because you typed it on your phone and you maybe have never actually met this person in real life, doesn't mean you're not still saying that stuff. Mm-hmm. And like. Like, Savannah, what you were just saying about, like, the comment you got, like, you got how many other comments on that same video not addressing yeah. the fact that you didn't shave your legs, but mm-hmm. the one that probably oh, stuck out to you and you're going to yeah. think about the most is that rude one, mm-hmm. where it's like, I've had stuff like that too, Morgan, you probably have as well, where it's just like, you know, I don't think it's fair to look at someone who has any sort of platform and say, like, well, you're you're famous, so you have to learn how to deal with it. Mm-hmm. I don't think that's a fair thing to say. Like Mm -hmm. you should learn how to deal with it so you can have peace of mind and you can live, Mm -hmm. live a healthy life. You deserve that. But I shouldn't have to learn how to cope with people saying things about my life or making something like saying something that they think is a joke that makes me uncomfortable Mm -hmm. because, because just because they want to. Yeah. Like I shouldn't have to learn how to live with that. Other people, famous people, whatever, shouldn't have to learn how to live with that. You mm-hmm. should just learn how to have some manners. Well, <laughs> you should learn not to, you know, not to be mean online. It's yeah. so unnecessary. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it's just crazy. Just because you can doesn't mean you should. Well, a lesson we should all take into account. That's my next point. <sighs> Everyone is lazy. <laughs> <laughs> Social media has, again, the accessibility of social media. Everything, and just the way the internet has evolved, everything Mm -hmm. is handed to us on a silver platter, directly formed, created, put together for you as an individual. Mm -hmm. And it's nuts. Mm -hmm. Everything that you see on your phone, on the internet, is for you. Mm -hmm. And be like, especially the TikTok algorithm, you open it, They're showing you videos that they think you want to see. Mm. The TikTok comment section has become (sighs) Google. Uh And it's Uh crazy to me. I literally can't do it at a certain point. People are asking questions in the TikTok comments. Things that are very Mm Googleable, And waiting for other people to respond. Mm Mm-hmm. Who may not be right. Yeah. Yeah. And they're waiting for the person whose video that they're watching to respond. Mm -hmm. Because 
they, they should are, be accessible at all times. They and they think that they're deserving comment. of all their time. Everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like for you, just posting. Like like look at you're already on your phone. You're mm-hmm. already on the internet. <laughs> mm-hmm. Tap a couple more things. Mm-hmm. Look it up from a reputable source. Mm-hmm. I believe in you. Yeah. You and oftentimes the information is like in the caption. You know? That's the other thing. <laughs> look around. Mm-hmm. Take in the world around you. Then look at the bottom of your TikTok for you page. <laughs> like, there will be words there. There will. I promise. Most of the time. <laughs> And if, and, not, if watching... and if not, the creator has probably realized that and already mm-hmm. answered one of the comments mm-hmm, mm-hmm, that is mm-hmm. asked the same question. And it's probably yeah. right at the top, too, because they boost comments that the creator has responded to. So yeah. it'll probably be very easy for you to find. <laughs> and people think that they're entitled to answers mm-hmm. and to everything. Don't gatekeep. Don't gatekeep, guys. <laughs> Don't gatekeep. And we've talked about this before, about... yeah people asking for patterns people asking for exact stitches and stitch counts and yeah essentially patterns for free yeah yeah and it's like don't, like don't expect answers we yeah. don't owe you that but it's beyond yeah. just that like i saw a, a tiktok a couple weeks ago um from a creator who like has fun glasses or whatever mm-hmm. and they were responding to a comment of someone saying that they have repeatedly asked this person where they got their glasses and mm-hmm. the person hasn't responded. Mm-hmm. And the person's like, the creator was like, I haven't responded to this comment for like multiple reasons. And that's, it's mm-hmm. not cause I don't want to tell you where I got my glasses, mm-hmm. but it's cause I don't want to feed in to this demand mm-hmm. of having to know everything, mm-hmm. which is honestly really fair. Like, yeah, they don't yeah. owe you anything to tell you where they got their classes. That's why I was... They don't need to tell you. You can ask. You can wonder. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. But you can also Google pink-framed glasses. <laughs> like, they obviously found them somehow. Mm-hmm. You could That's do the same I... thing. It annoys me so bad. You're not gonna... You're not gonna buy the glasses frames. You're not going to. Let's face the facts. You will look it up. It'll be $200, $300. You'll you'll go, that's really expensive. And you'll comment that and you'll say, "Um, can you like find like a cheaper alternative for me? Like these glasses frames are too expensive. I was just on TikTok last night. Um, It's prom season. I'm getting a lot of prom videos. All these girls are looking so cute. Love the dresses. Everyone's commenting. What dress is this? What brand? Can you give me like the number for it? You're not going to get that dress. You're not. Even Even if you could afford it, even if it was like, I don't know. You have the money. You have everything. People are too lazy. There, you're still gonna go in person and like shop for a dress. No, that's not how people shop for things. You're not gonna go come across one video and be like, "That's my prom dress," um, and then just wait and beg for months and months. For I, I would say I get so many comments on whenever a video does well, saying asking for a pattern. The amount of people that actually buy the pattern once I'm like, "Hey, it's on my Etsy." Probably sub 10%, I would yeah. say. I don't, there's no way to officially know that. Um, but they, it's just never, the proportion of sales to like, I don't know, views or comments is just never, it never matches up, curiously. Because people, even if they ask, that. they don't actually, they're not actually going to go and buy it. It's out of pure, just curiosity or something, which is fair. Um, but then don't get like mad whenever someone doesn't tell you, you know? Like we, we yeah. know you're not going to, most of the time, you're not going to actually go and buy the thing. I was going to say something very similar, you know, tying this into fiber arts, the demand for a pattern, just because you made something that someone likes, mm-hmm. they like, I I make something that someone likes, and I don't have a pattern for it, but they think that they're entitled to my idea just because they also want to make it. Mm-hmm. You're not, you straight up mm-hmm. aren't like, that's just, that's an unfair idea. Yep. You don't get everything that you want. Mm-hmm. sorry like <laughs> but we've gotten so used to the idea that you do you know with mm-hmm. the the glasses frames and the demanding that someone gives the answer just because they want it in the sake of not gatekeeping and whatever mm-hmm. also but again yeah oh sorry continue i was gonna say to savannah's point you know say you do write the pattern and mm-hmm. heaven forbid it's not free mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. automatically it's like you're then gatekeeping because there's a price on it mm-hmm. and heaven forbid the idea that this is my job and it's how I make money. Mm -hmm. 
But even if it was free, how many of you are actually going to make it? Because if you're seeing a tailored feed of fiber artists Mm -hmm. making phenomenal work, because Mm -hmm. in my opinion, most fiber artists who have a platform (laughs) have fully deserved it because Mm -hmm. they do make phenomenal stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. So you have a tailored feed of things that, you know, you love. Let's say eight out of 10 of them you would have interest in making. Mm -hmm. You don't have enough time in the day or enough time in the year to make all of the things that you want to make. That's just like a straight up fact. Yeah. So you're going to leave a comment on all of them demanding that they give you something that you're not going to end up doing. So they just Mm -hmm. wasted their time. Like you aren't entitled to everybody's time just because you want something once, especially if you're not actually going to go out of your way to support the artist, no matter what. Mm -hmm. Again, going back into social media algorithms and the internet cookies, data, etc. People are so used to being handed everything that they want Mm-hmm. even if they didn't even realize they wanted it. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I was just talking about this the other day and now it's an ad mm-hmm. on Instagram. That's because mm-hmm. they're listening to you. Mm-hmm. But you, like, people don't have to go out and search for things anymore. Mm-hmm. Whether it's ads that are served to them personally, somebody, a creator that they like that they're following that is wearing a pair of jeans. They're like, oh, I like these jeans. Let me go buy these jeans. They mm-hmm. didn't have to look for a pair of jeans. They weren't like, oh, I mm-hmm. need a new pair of jeans. Let me go look for a new pair of jeans. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That they saw a pair of jeans, they purchased a pair of jeans again with like Amazon and online shopping. It's just everything is so easy. Mm-hmm. You don't have to go to the store. You don't have mm-hmm. to try them on. You don't have to go back to return them. Mm-hmm. You just ship it off. Mm-hmm. And because we've gotten so used to having everything handed to us by corporations, by the internet, people are expecting it of individuals too. Mm-hmm. I'm just yeah. a girl. i can't do everything i also Mm -hmm. think that people not only do they want everything but they think everything's gonna work for them all of the time Mm -hmm. like you might love those frames but like maybe they just won't work for you Mm -hmm. yeah (laughs) maybe they just won't work or yeah those jeans look great on that person But why are you going to harass them to tell you what jeans they are just for you to, like we said, not end up buying them. The price isn't right. You don't like the way that they look on you. Like, just because it works for someone else doesn't mean it's going to work for you. So why are you going to harass them into giving you exactly what you want when, at the end of the day, you might not even enjoy it? Like, you're not that person. Don't try to be that person. Just... Do what the, that person did and Google something and try stuff out until you find what actually works for you. Mm-hmm. Put in the work. Yeah. Get Put some individual out. identity, please. It does. It kind of makes me sad seeing some of my, not like close friends, but like adjacent friends who I'm aware, like they genuinely watch Instagram reels or like TikTok for three to five hours like per day Mm -hmm. um, because it's hard because they're designed to keep you on them so like I can't Mm -hmm. really fault them to a certain extent Um, but just to watch them like kind of lose a sense of personal identity and like take whatever is fed to them like they have the Stanley Cups they have I don't know whatever is trendy at the moment they will get and they will talk about it and whatever is happening online is like what's happening in their life like I'll be like oh like how are your classes going they're like oh fine have you heard about this Kate Middleton stuff and like yes that's fun I want to know about that but um what what is happening with your individual life how are you like developing as a person you know what I mean there's like it's just there's a big talk right now about people not having hobbies yeah I think to your point about like people following trends it's kind of always been that way just because of capitalism But it's, like, on more of a global stage now mm-hmm. because everybody has access to everything happening, mm-hmm. which is crazy. Like, it's not <laughs> – it is – like, I was saying it's curated, but it's not as curated as it used to be. Look at this light mm-hmm. right now. Oh, my God. <laughs> I, oh, like, I was just thinking. I was like, it's finally sunny. Yeah. <laughs> She's agreeing with me. Um, <laughs> it's not – as as curated as it used to be and right now i'm thinking of the cerulean scene in devil wears prada Mm. oh how she's like what you're wearing was chosen by the people in this room Mm -hmm. and obviously yes fashion is still like influenced by like literally anna wintour but like Mm -hmm. what people are wearing are now decided on 
by the general public and not mm-hmm. just the CEOs and executives. Mm-hmm. It's like, like Victoria Paris. Mm-hmm. She's wearing this dress from Free People. Mm-hmm. Now it's sold out. Mm-hmm. So it's just, yep. it's crazy how everything's, how everything's changed. Well, yeah, the world has changed. Who could have guessed? <laughs> crazy. <laughs> I was going to say to your point, Morgan, it's interesting, like, top down versus down up fashion trends. Um, because those have, like, always existed, like, I don't know, subcultures from, like, I don't know, the hippie subculture, or, like, the punk subculture. Yeah. Um, they are created initially as, like, anti- high fashion movements um but then high fashion is like you guys are kind of cool like (laughs) let's let's incorporate some into our stuff um so it becomes like the i feel like the general public has at least always had at least a little bit of a say uh they can shape fashion through their demands or whatever um obviously a lot of high fashion is not about what you see on the runway normal people will never wear um it's more for celebrities and red carpets than anything else it's more for engaging in the grand experiment of fashion um than anything else which people don't understand and they say oh my god like i would never wear that and it's like they know they don't care (laughs) You will be wearing a much watered down version of that in four yes. months. Yes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The general, the silhouette they're doing, you're going to suddenly love when Victoria Paris wears it. Yeah. They pay her to, free people pays her to wear a dress. So it gets sold out. It's just very interesting how, um, I don't know, one one creator, if you get big, if people take enough like faith in your ideas and what your style is, it, it doesn't, they will buy it. That's that's fantastic in a way, but also very terrifying. Um, we're always going to have idols like that. There's no way to escape that sort of celebrity culture, I think. Um, but I don't know. I think it's it can be slightly better, I think, that it's normal people. And that, I don't know if we are sharing the, maybe I shouldn't say that. I was going to say, like, maybe normal people are, like, getting more money from fashion houses to wear these things now. But that's probably not true. I don't know. I feel like there's a lot of stuff that happens behind the scenes that people don't realize Yeah, yeah. that influences them that they think is organic. Yeah. Another thing that is crazy to me is, like, how much people will believe on social media mm. and on TikTok. Mm-hmm. Like, how? Like, there is no media literacy anymore. No. Mm-mm. Like, there are so many, like, skit and staged videos. Uh-huh. And mm-hmm. I'm like, can you not tell that this isn't real? The, do you know, like, the couples, like, skits and stage video? Do you know what I'm talking about? Like, that genre of people who has, like, they have, like, plain white houses. And they're yeah. like, hey, babe, come in the kitchen and try these normal Cheetos. Yeah. And then they're, like, hot Cheetos or something. They're like, oh, my God. It's like, what, what like, are we doing? If your partner is walking up to you with a, a phone. plate of food and a phone, mm-hmm. you're not going to respond organically. Mm-mm. It's being recorded. It's a skit. Mm-hmm. You do this every day, multiple times a day. I, I'll I'll also watch some of them. I still think that some of them are funny for what they are, but like, mm-hmm. they're fake. They're not uh-huh. real. This is mm-hmm. not. Mm-hmm. They're acting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what. Did you guys see? It went viral on Twitter. I'd never actually saw it on TikTok. It was this woman. Um, she had like a clear purse. It was like solid, kind of. It was almost oh. like a sculpture that looks like a purse. Yeah. And it was, yeah. You with, saw those more with Jello or something. Yeah, she filled it up with Jello, like shots or something, and she was like, <laughs> "I'm like gonna take this to the club," and they're yeah. like, "Not gonna be able to tell. It's like not my actual purse." And everyone in the comments was like, "You're so stupid. They're never gonna go for that." Um, and it's like she was joking. How did you possibly think that she was going to carry a jello purse into the club? And she was like, it, it's so, it's also a part of like, people just don't think women are funny okay. and they don't, yeah. they're I not going to so like engage I, with that. We probably saw the same quote tweet. Yeah. Of someone who was like, <laughs> men don't think women are funny because they don't understand the jokes that women tell. Yeah. 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 Because it's like, that was a joke. Mm-hmm. You can but laugh. here's the thing. The, and this goes back to the whole idea of, like, just because you can leave a comment doesn't mean you should. It's, like, mm-hmm. it is admittedly hard to understand tone on social media. It's yeah. very flat. There's really no way to indicate any sort of tone unless, like, you use emojis or you know the person that you're talking to. You know the, the way the person speaks, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, which I find to be very interesting. But it's hard for people to pick up on tone and understand nuance, especially if, <laughs> with peace and love, 
everyone's getting dumber by the day. Like they mm. don't understand what nuance is. They don't mm. understand media literacy, whatever. Yeah. Um, Oh my God, I was going somewhere with that and then I totally lost it. But what was it? The idea that it's like, they take it exactly for what it is and mm-hmm. not for a second consider that like, maybe it is a joke that went over my head. So their first instinct is to like put someone down and make them feel bad is crazy. Like, yeah, I might've t- totally understood it as a joke and someone else might not have, but why mm-hmm. was your first instinct to like tear them down? Mm-hmm. And I think to leave a comment that was nasty and awful to make them mm-hmm. feel bad. Like just scroll away. Yeah. So that can, I think it can be attributed back to being fed everything that you see. Mm-hmm. And maybe you're fed a video on TikTok that isn't necessarily for you. Mm-hmm. People mm-hmm. think it's for them and they're like, this is terrible. I don't like it. Next. Yeah. It's like, mm-hmm. okay, if you don't like it, then don't watch it. Yeah. Whoa. Don't comment. Whoa. Maybe it's not for you. Whoa. What a wild concept. Wild Crazy. Mm-hmm. LOL. Anyways. LOL. <laughs> Anybody can be an influencer. They can. Do they want, should they want to? Probably not. No. Probably not. And you can make a lot of money off of it, but the threshold to make money and the amount of tension you need to oh. have to make a good amount of money. I'm not sure. Like, I do want that. I want the money. I, I, the attention, like, I'd rather be, like, Pinterest famous. We're all trying to get our Pinterest money up right now. <laughs> yeah, um, we're currently in our Pinterest era. In our Pinterest yeah. time. <laughs> but I'd much rather have attention on a site where people are not asking much of you than somewhere on TikTok or Instagram where they believe that they know your life, their your day-to-day life. I, I wonder sometimes what my followers must think, um, because, oh, she's not posting. She's probably working on something behind the scenes. No. I'm doing my essays for school <laughs> for once in my life. You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I also don't think they think about it at all. I don't think anyone who has below one million followers, maybe, has anyone being like, oh, well, I wonder yeah. what happened to this creator. No one cares that I'm taking a break. I don't need to announce it. I don't need to be like, sorry, guys. I'll be back. It's okay. We you consume so much okay. content in a day that even the people... Like, I have a hard time listing off the youtubers i like to watch videos of because i watch so many of them that i can't track like we we consume too much content to Mm -hmm. really remember something Mm -hmm. that i think about a lot that isn't necessarily related to what you guys were just talking about is that so you know how tiktok for like the people with smaller accounts has like you can see who has viewed your page yeah what drives me (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> the lighting is so beautiful. I'm laughing at Anna coughing. Yeah, um, I, well, I, at I least I muted my mic. That. Love. <laughs> this lighting is also crazy. What makes me laugh a little bit is when people will like post a TikTok publicly and be like, no one was supposed to see this. Why are you stalking my account? Uh-huh. You have a public account. You're posting mm-hmm. videos publicly, uh, publicly mm-hmm. and you are using hashtags. You mm-hmm. want people to see your videos. If you actually didn't want words. people to see your videos, you would have a private account and you wouldn't mm-hmm. post public videos. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's like, I can't blame you if you want to amass a following on, on social media. Who who mm-hmm. doesn't? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Everybody wants like, that 15 it. minutes of fame. Mm-hmm. Everybody wants to see those big numbers. But it's like, don't pretend that you don't want it. Yeah. If you are posting publicly if you actually don't want people to see what you're doing make your account private whoa don't what post whoa whoa yeah just because you can't doesn't mean you should anyways a beautiful lesson anyways <laughs> this, this is actually what an interesting crazy. topic i feel like this could go on for like five different episodes about i don't know celebrity culture and i don't know how easy it is to become an influencer yeah it's yeah but it's also not easy like i feel like we i think it's easy to have a video get a million views but it's not easy to keep an audience yes yeah i was thinking that in the beginning yeah yeah i i don't know like it's easy to have one hit post and be like i've finally done it i've finally there and then and then no one cares i don't know 
yeah, I have a good following on Instagram. I, I don't know how many it's at right now. Um, but my story views used to be a good like 10% of my following. It's maybe 3% now. Yeah. Um, and there's probably next to nothing I can do to fix yeah. that. And that's okay. You just have to be able to accept that and yeah. try other strategies like Pinterest. Yay! Yeah. Like I think in the general sense, it's a lot easier now than it used to be to mm-hmm. become somebody like well-known, to become like yeah. a celebrity, to become an influencer, which is like a newer term. Yeah. Because we didn't have access to these platforms. No one had access to these platforms Mm-hmm. you know in the 2000s yeah like yeah. you'd have to do something cra- you'd have to go on american idol yeah. <clears throat> yeah. that's what you'd yeah. have to do yeah and that's how you became well known or you had to have like a viral youtube video mm-hmm. but again youtube was a lot harder to build a platform because you think about mm-hmm. how many people have millions of followers on tiktok versus how many people have had millions of subscribers yeah. on youtube back in the day very different it's a very different number Mm-hmm. it's a lot harder it was a lot harder back then than it is now but yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. it's crazy times are a changing they sure are i'm very excited to see i think it's so interesting seeing like people who like kind of ex-youtubers um who have transitioned out of that lifestyle like what they're doing now i'm so interested to see like uh this generation of like influencers kind of our age if they're ever going to like get a job yeah um because i i've seen a couple videos in the past couple months of people being like i tried to be an influencer i have the following the money's great i just my brain is dying and i need to like get a job to survive yeah yeah and it's totally fair it is totally fair i think it's like even with the stuff that we do like it is we have to use our brains like like we're designing patterns we're coming up with Mm -hmm. ideas like you definitely do think creatively which is can be really fun and some people really thrive off of that Mm -hmm. but like for me I can't stand the idea of like if I am not interesting enough people aren't gonna watch yeah like and I can't let my money be reliant on how how entertaining I feel like I am yeah Yeah. that's what what I was thinking about this earlier today um when I had some extra time in the morning um and how, no, I totally just lost my point. What was it? What was it? Yeah. Okay. I feel like <clears throat> like basing your content off of like lifestyle must be so different from, it must, it takes a whole different like level of energy because anytime you like go anywhere, you have to take pictures. Totally. You have to ask people to take pictures of you. Um, we can kind of be selective with that. We can, it's still like, I don't know. I hate working on a project and I've talked about this before, like stopping in the middle to like record a little TikTok. But then they mm-hmm. are always recording. They are always thinking of how they can turn their life into content. That there are harder jobs, but that has to be exhausting. That I can't. I, I feel like I feel that. like a shell of a person. Yeah. If I was just recording performing every second for every other day. people. Yeah. You always have to be on. Mm-hmm. And that's yeah. not a lot of people don't realize that they would not want to do that, and they want to aspire to be a lifestyle influencer. But I don't. I think most people would absolutely hate it. It's also like. Mm-hmm none of your life is yours yeah Mm -hmm. it's everybody else's Mm -hmm. and then they think they're entitled to everything and then they demand things and then they think you're gay (laughs) (laughs) shout out taylor swift shout out Taylor Swift. always brings it back to taylor swift (laughs) every episode i'm serious we talk every episode episode. the web is connected her web connects her web connects them all i need (laughs) to see madam web so badly. Is it still in theaters? I have no idea. It's on digital now. It shouldn't be. Find oh, really? It. Everyone Already? hates it. It's not streaming. It's just digital. Mm, cheers. I think wow. I think I would love it. The previews <laughs> looked good, so I was shocked that everyone despised it. Everyone's I... like, it's the worst movie I've ever seen. <laughs> Great time. Yeah. Great time. <laughs> I yeah, it kind of made me want to see it more. I and I don't so like badly. I don't consume Marvel or anything like that, but like I want to yeah. see it. Yeah, Real. I do. I want to see Love Lies Bleeding, the new Same. movie with Kristen Stewart. Yeah. I need I need to go see. It looks I think so Kate good. and I might go see it this weekend. Nice. You have to report back yeah. and log it on I your letterbox. Duh. Duh. <laughs> so lads, what are we what's our what's our final question? What are we listening to? What are we You're watching, reading, etc. etc. Cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Oh, I finished um, three books over spring break. Please clap. Period. Thank you. Thank you. 
I was one of them was um, it's called When Breath Becomes Air. Um, mm-hmm. It was by a neurosurgeon who right before he finished his like residency so he could like finally become a neurosurgeon, um, he got lung cancer. Um, and so he wrote a book about coming to terms with like his own death. Um, and he died before he finished the book. Um, oh. And so I was reading that on the drive back. Um, and I was like, okay, like, it's a very short book. And it's, it's like, the text is pretty big. And like, you can tell, like, I don't know, they were trying to stretch this out. There's like a yeah. prologue and an epilogue. Um, and I was like, okay, yeah, like the whole book I hadn't cried. I had seen people say they had cried mainly at the beginning of the book. So I was like, I'm chill. Um, then the last page comes in, and it's a note to like his daughter. Um, and I'm like, I can't. So I start sobbing. Absolutely not. Um, Absolutely in the car not. on the drive cool. home. So <laughs> that was an awesome experience. Um, yeah, I couldn't even tell you. No, I read an Ann Patchett book. She's a pretty famous author. In sure. Asheville, where we went for spring break, I found a signed copy of one of her books. And I was like, oh, okay, I have heard of her before. I don't Word. know a single one of her books. Yeah. And it was $16 for a signed copy from this famous yeah. author. Um, it's not signed to me. It was someone's Christmas present. The note is like... Um, oh, happy, Merry Christmas, Anne. Like, hope you love this. Uh, I was like, oh, oh. They broke up. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Something like that. But yeah, that's wow. what I'm doing. Not much um, watching or, wait, no, I watched Borat. I watched nice. something else recently. Yeah, nothing, nothing of interest. Love Lies Bleeding is going to be interesting for sure. Yeah. Can you, I don't about you. Oh. No me yeah. um i'm rewatching the good place um for like probably the seventh time <laughs> you love a rewatch you know what i do <laughs> i really do it's just such a good show it's too good so i'm almost done that what else i watched the Eras tour movie oh yeah duh. Yeah. Duh. duh it was great <laughs> it's so course. fun i wish i was going mm. <sighs> <laughs> but anyways that's it oh i finally got the fifth percy jackson book i had to wait nice. a bit but yeah i was available yesterday i haven't started it yet but it's now in my libby so now i can watch it oh Love. my god you know what i look like you guys know the book <laughs> bad case of the stripes <laughs> yes that's what i look like right now yes yeah. the stripes um, episode but yeah that's it i think cool love yeah um, I just finished reading the second, the book after Fourth Wing, I finished mm. Iron Flame. Yeah. For, Fourth Wing was better, but Iron mm. Flame, like, there were some things that happened throughout that I would, like, physically have to, I, granted, I was reading on Libby, so I was reading out on my iPad or my phone, so I put my like, phone yeah. down, but to say, <laughs> imagine it's a book. Yeah. I had to, like, put the book down and be like, <laughs> um, so I'm, like, sad that I'm gonna have to wait for the next book to come out. Um, when does it come out? Do you know? I think she's currently writing it. Okay, love. So a while. Yeah. Yeah. I think that sucks. I was scrolling through Reddit a little bit because I had a couple of questions about stuff. So I was like kind of perusing. And I think I saw someone say that like the author had claimed that the books are going to take a little bit longer because Mm. um, like she wants to avoid burnout, which makes sense because they are really, really long. Yeah. So (laughs) yeah, I was like, that's like so fair. You know, <laughs> I'll I'll wait for it. I'll be excited when it comes out. That is like exciting, but yeah. um, I'm bummed that there's not like an answer to some yeah. of the questions that I have towards the end. Yeah. Um, but that's okay because because I'll enjoy it when it does come out. And then I don't know. I've I have some books that I want to read, but nothing that I've really gotten into. Mm-hmm. Um, I've just been watching YouTube. I haven't had time to do anything. I'm not even kidding. The time that I do have, I will. I've was reading yeah. Iron Flame, but now that that's mm-hmm. done, all I did was work. I'm not even kidding. So no. sad. Boo. Look at that money. That's okay. Wow. Well, is that it, ladies? Yeah, I think yeah. so. Well, well, outro time. Thanks. Thanks for, for listening. listening. Oh, oh, who's doing it? You. You. This goes. Thanks for listening to this <laughs> episode of the Crochet Authority. If you liked it, which we know you did. Make sure to rate it five stars and give us the best review possible wherever you can. Also, make sure to stay up to date with us on Instagram and TikTok at The Crochet Authority. And also follow our personal accounts on social media because we're perfect. Bye! Bye! Bye.